So welcome back guys to Primax Privacity YouTube channel. Today, I want to quickly teach you one or two things to know about the 2024 Y practical. So you must have been hearing one thing or the other about the practical. And for you to score your A in WAEC, your practical is very, very important. So I just want to give you a brief introduction to all the things you need to do in your practical without wasting much time. And if you are checking the practical for this year, it's going to be slightly different from what you used to know when you talk about chemistry practicals. So that's why we need you to pay serious attention to this class. So looking at what we have here, when you are writing your practicals, you're going to have three sets of questions. The first question aspect is going to be on quantitative analysis. That's where you do most of your calculations and all. And the common practical you have always been doing is acid-based titration. Many of you are used to that already. You take your acid, you put it in burette, you pipette your base, you add your indicator, and your practical goes on. Then at the end of the practical, you see a color change. But in this practical this year, we're going to be doing what we call redox titration. And from the word redox, you can see, aridem means reduction, then OX means oxidation. So when you're talking about redox titration, you want to see the way an oxidizing agent and reducing agents, the way they behave. So I will explain more on that in this class. So the second question you're going to have, I said you're going to have three questions. The first one is going to be quantitative analysis, where you do some bit of calculations. And the second is going to be qualitative analysis. In qualitative analysis, what you do is that they will give you a powder or probably a salt and ask you to determine the type of element that is present in that salt. In that case, you try to determine the cation or the anion that might likely be present. So after this class, I'm going to be teaching you some things about how to determine some elements that might be present in the compound. Then the third question is going to be general chemistry knowledge. What experience do you have treating your inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, and most of those questions that has to do with the laboratory techniques. So that's what your general chemistry knowledge is going to be based upon. So you need to understand a whole lot in chemistry in order for you to answer that number three. But the purpose of this class is to focus on number one, and by tomorrow I will upload the practical, the experiment. So I want to explain everything you need to do in a short time. So after the experiment tomorrow, you can subscribe to the channel if you're here to subscribe so that you get the updates for the experiments when I upload tomorrow. And don't forget to ring the notification button so that you get the information as soon as the video is uploaded. So let's go back to the class. So our, what we are focusing on today is quantitative analysis. Commonly, I have drawn this to just depict what I have on the table. What I have here is called the burette. And from your experience, even if you do not know before, what used to be in the burette is the acid. That has been the common experience. And this is what we call the burette. So as you can see. Now, this is called the pipette. I can't really find where my pipette is, but I'll show you tomorrow. So this is called the pipette. The pipette is used to take liquid from the beaker. And you transfer the liquid from the beaker into what we call the conical flask. The conical flask is where your reaction takes place. So if you want to carry out acid-based titration, you are going to need your conical flask. So your base is going to be in the beaker. You pipette probably 20 or 25 mil of the base, and you put it in your beaker, I mean in your conical flask. Then what do you do? You add an indicator. Then you titrate the acid against the base. And at the end point, you see a color change. That tells you if the reaction has happened or not. But this time, our practical is not going to be like that. If you look at what I have here, I have KMNO4, which is like my A. If you remember, sometimes they will say CA, VA over CB, VB. And that is talking about one of the calculations you do on, or, on, on acid base. Now, what I'm doing here is that we don't know how your chemistry questions will come, but it will come in two forms. The KMNO4 is labeled here, then the A is labeled as well. So if it comes as A, that means I'm treating my KMNO4 as A. And if it comes as B, that means I'm treating my FeSO4 as B. So just follow this and let your mind go with what I'm saying. Because when we get to the calculation aspect, I might not be using the word KMNO4, I might be using A, or I might be using B. 
So from what we have here, you are going to be titrating your KMNO4 against FESO4. FESO4 is the one that, go, that is going to sound just like your base. Don't complicate it. It's going to sound just like your base, while your KMNO4 is going to sound just like your acid. Now, what do you always have in your burette, like I said the other time? The acid. That means that which one is going to be in the burette this time? If I say KMNO4 is acting as the acid, that means your KMNO4 is going to be in the burette this time. While your FESO4 is going to be pipetted from the beaker and transferred into the conical flask. So if you look at this equation, technically, your KMNO4 is going to serve as an, an oxidizing agent. When you check the oxidation state of KMNO4 here, it's going to be plus 7. And when you check it here, it is going to be plus 2. So when you are going from plus 7 to plus 2, that means that is reduction. And the one that is undergoing reduction is known as your oxidizing agent. And from what we have here, this one is going from plus 2 to plus 3. And that is undergoing oxidation. So the one undergoing oxidation is known as your reducing agent. But I'm not going to be using the terms reducing or oxidizing. You will see here, I said... There's actually some of the basic knowledge you need in order to understand this experiment. But I will not use those terms in order not to get you confused. You need to know what oxidation reduction is, how to balance redox equation in acidic or basic medium, then some basic stoichiometry techniques. Now, from what I have here, I've already balanced the equation. Now, I'm showing you the first part. This one is known as my oxidizing agent, and this one is known as my reducing agent. Now, from what you are going to see here, by the time I start mixing the KMNO4 and the FESO4, the color will start changing to colorless. So let's describe the experiment. Now, my KMNO4 is inside the burette. You fill it to the zero mark, your burette. So when you fill it to the zero mark, your pipette, your pipette is going to be dependent on if you are using 20 mil or 25 mil pipette. Please be careful. If your school is using 20 mil, when you are doing your calculations, you are going to focus on that 20 mil pipette. If your school is using 25 mil pipette, you are going to focus on 25 mil pipette. Do not take tables from your friends across the road and say you want to use their own pipette. You have gotten it wrong already. So ask your teacher, check your table. What pipettes are you using? So if you are using 25 mil pipettes, then you come to your table and you write volume of pipettes used is 25.00 mil. So that's what you are using as your own pipette. And that's what I'll be taking for my own experiment as well. So now that I have my pipettes, this FESO4 would have been in the beaker so that it would be easy for you to transfer. So when you put the FESO4 in the beaker, you pipette 25 mil, then you transfer the 25 mil FESO4. 25 mil FESO4. So you transfer it into the conical flask. Now, there's one thing you always do during the acid-base nitration. You will see here, where is my indicator? My indicator is not on this table. So that means that there's a question they can ask you. Why is it that we are not using indicator in this experiment? Look at what I've done here. The, the indicator you used to add during the acid-based titration, when you add the indicator, the indicator will have a color change. And when that indicator has a color change, that can tell you the end of the reaction. But look at this. This one can go from purple to colorless. Then it will go from purple to colorless, then from colorless to pink. So... Since this guy has the ability to carry out that color change itself, then you don't need an indicator. The job of, in, of the indicator is to change the color. But now, you already have a reagent that will change its own color. So, when they ask you that, why is an indicator not used in this experiment? It is because KMNO4 can act as self-indicator. So, thank you for that. So, now, let's move on with our experiment. We have pipetted 25 mil into conical flask. So what do we do next? This reaction must be acidified. The, the major reason you are adding acid to it is to keep the concentration constant. So we acidify it to stabilize the concentration of this FeSO4. So now, by the time we add acid, they may ask you to pipe. Maybe this is called a measuring cylinder. So after you have transferred from the beaker to the conical flask, you will use your measuring cylinder to measure probably 10, 20, 
depending on what your question has described. You measure 20 mil, for example, of the H2SO4, you pour it into the conical flask. I'll be doing the experiment tomorrow, so make sure you subscribe to get the experiment proper. So I'm just explaining this so that you have the background knowledge to what we are going to be doing in the experiment. So when you pour the H2SO4 into the beaker, so you already know what we have. You titrated the um, FeSO4 into the conical flask. You added 20 ml of the H2SO4 into the conical flask. Now, what do we do? This is the conical flask now. So I assume that my FeSO4 and H2SO4 is already in the conical flask. And what did I say would be my burette? That is my KMNO4. So now, KMNO4 is at the zero mark. Then this paper purpose there is for you to easily see the color change. So it has nothing to do with your experiment. So you place it while you place your conical flask and you start releasing. So I, I will show you how the experiment should run. If someone just broke this thing now, now, now. So, but there is nothing. So we'll use it. I'll show you some of the apparatus will be sent tomorrow. So you open the beaker and you start releasing it inside. Then what are you going to notice? This guy is there already. The H2SO4 is there. The FeSO4 is there. When you start releasing the KMNO4, you're going to be seeing the purple color. Then you continue to shake and shake and shake. Then until a stage that the purple color will turn colorless. At that point in time, that means you have used the entire Fe, Fe2 plus completely. And from there, you stop and you add more. You continue to add drop by drop. Then when you add drop by drop, you see a pink color. So you go from purple to colorless, then to pink. At the moment you see the pink color, that means your reaction has gotten to the end point. Then what do you do? You take your readings. Do you know how to take your reading? From what I have here, you know, my first experiment can be what we call my rough. So I'll take my reading. And when you are recording your table, this is how you do it. You have your burette reading. That means what you're dropping down from the burette. You have the final burette reading, which is going to be what you have left after you have dropped the liquid. Where did I start from? I started from, that's my initial burette reading. I started from 0.00. .00. Now, if you see this place now, I'm using two decimal places. You have to be consistent. You have to use two decimal places all through your experiments or all through your table. So don't use two decimal places here and you move to the next one, you use one decimal place. My dear, you are playing with F9. So from what we have here, when you drop it from zero to probably, let's say you drop it to, and you don't check the lower many scores because you are using KMNO4, you check at the upper part because there can be a, a bit of error in this because KMNO4 has a particular color that you can see. So let's say this thing dropped to probably 23. So when it drops to 23, so you are going to record 23. How many decimal places? Very good, too. So that would be 23.00. So if you subtract this from this, definitely you have 23.00. Then when you carry out the experiment again, you can refill the KMNO4 to zero again. That means your initial reading is also going to be 0.00. .00. So when you fill it again, then you carry out the experiment. This is your rough, so there might be bound to be errors. So, but this next one, there should be no error. So when you refill it to 0.00, .00 you start dropping the KMNO4. You do the things I've said initially. You start dropping it. Let's say it drops to probably 22. So 22.00. .00. You know, your error must not be more than plus or minus 0 0.1 or plus or minus 0 0.2 so you can't have any error that is wider than that so you have to be very careful so now you do the second titration during the second titration you can refill again or you can start from 22.2 .2. if i'm starting from 22.2 that means i'm not trying to refill 22.00 .00. i'm not trying to refill so you start dropping again let's say you drop it and it gets to probably 41.00 .00. so if it gets to 41 or let's say 42.10. So if it gets to 42.10, that means that that's going to be too much. So let's say it gets to 44, 44.10. When you check the difference between these, that's going to be 22.10. And initially, this is 22.00. So you can carry out another one. That means you have to refill now because the liquid would have dropped to the lowest mark. So you refill. So you start from 0.00, .00 again. Then 
let's drop the liquid let's say it drops to 22.00 so when you have that you have recorded your table so that is what you have so what do you do after that calculate your average title value so in order to calculate your average title value you have your so in order to calculate average title value you have your first title plus your second title plus the third title all divided by three and the first one being 22.00 plus 22.10 plus 22.00 so you can use your calculator to get that and that gives you the average title value now don't make a mistake you will see here that i have a year my a year indicates my key menu form but be careful whatever your question describes is what you should do so i'm using my a as my key menu form so in that sense now I can say that the volume of A used, then my volume of A is going to be whatever my answer is there. So that is how you do your experiments. Now, when you are through with your experiment, the next thing you're going to be doing is based on basic stoichiometry. So you're going to be doing some calculations, some additional questions will be added up to it. So quick summary. This is your burette. What should be in your burette? KMNO4. What should be in your conical flask? That is the pipetted FeSO4. Then when, what do you add to your FeSO4? You add H2SO4. And I said that why is an indicator not used in this experiment? Because KMNO4 is self-indicating. Then I said at the end of the day, this is a redox equation that you will be given. And this might be your A, this might be your B. So let me quickly show you some basic formulas you might need. In doing some calculation on this aspect so from your stoichiometry experiment you need to know these formulas so if you do not know go and practice them so number one formula is that we all know cava over cbvb so now an na over nb so from this equation there are a lot of things i can calculate i already know my volume of a used which is my volume of kmno4 they might, I, I also know the volume of B used. That is the volume I pipetted. That's 25 mil. So I know 25 mil. I know this volume. Then my FESO4 is actually a standard solution or probably the KMNO4. So it would have been prepared for you. So you know the concentration of B. It will be given in your question. So they can ask you to calculate the concentration of A. And from this equation, your number of mole of A is 1 number of mole of B is 5. So you can do your calculation to get your concentration of A. So that serves you right. So number 2, you can also use that concentration in mole per dm cube equals to concentration in gram per dm cube over molar mass. So let's assume that you have gotten the concentration in mole per dm cube Concentration in mole per dm cube of A, and they say calculate the concentration in gram per dm cube of A. So you're going to use this formula. So just get used to these formulas. If you're not used to them, practice them. I'll supply some more questions to you. So number three, you can also use number of mole is equal to mass over molar mass, depending on the question they ask you. Number four, you can also use number of mole is equal to volume at STP over molar volume, depending on the question they ask you so and and so on then the final one can be number of mole is equal to concentration times volume all divided by 1000 concentration times volume divided by 1000 if the volume is in cnq so these are formulas you might need during your experiment so that's all you are going to be doing you see that it doesn't take much time if you know what you are doing just get everything right i pray this is not broken too. So just get everything right as by tomorrow i'll perform the experiment do the color change for you to see so subscribe to the youtube channel we do a whole lot about education we try to make you get better in every ways we try to promote you and let you know more about academics and do not leave you in the dark so everything that has to do with admission we talk about it anything that has to do with schools and academics and all and learning we talk about it so do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel so and on the notification button so anytime we post or upload the video you get to be the first person to see it so thank you so much i love you i'll see you around.